Hey, it's Coach David. Welcome back to my channel. Good to see subscribers here. And if you're new, welcome as well. Today we are talking about how to deal with stress. Now, stress is different than anxiety because stress is something that is very stimulus dependent, meaning there's something happening right now in your life that when it goes away, all the stress will go away. Whereas anxiety is persistent worrying thinking or worrying about the future or what could happen no matter if there's actually some kind of stimulus or stressful factor there or not. It's much more internally generated where stress could come and go. It could be a situation at work or in your business that's really, really stressing you out. Could be relationship, health, what have you. And so as we dive in here, again, just want to reiterate that we are focusing on stress, not anxiety, though there is crossover, of course, because both have mental and emotional elements, but there are some unique things that are different between stress and anxiety that's going to focus in on helping you alleviate that stress ASAP. So the first thing you've got to do is check the big three, right? And that's diet slash nutrition, exercise and sleep, diet, nutrition and sleep have to start here because it's likely that some habits could have dropped or gotten into bad habits, quote unquote, as you've gotten stressed. In order to cope with it, perhaps you felt you had to work more, so you stopped taking walks or going to the gym, right? Or running, whatever. Maybe you started smashing back more beers at night or slamming cupcakes into your face in order to cope with the stress. And while, you know, A for effort on that, it's going towards a D and very much so an F and actually being effective in helping you deal with and change the stress, right? And one thing that's very common that I've noticed with myself is at times in life where maybe I was stressed and didn't realize it, if I was going to McDonald's and getting chicken nuggets, like a comfort food for me as a kid, probably have some stress going on in my life or something, right? And we can have these indicators of comfort foods or comfort behaviors, activities, things that are soothing and a lot of times maybe not so healthy for us that we're just starting to fall into and we may not even realize it. And that means that some other habit that might have already been in place and would already help us with the stress has fallen to the wayside. So we're actually making it worse by doing this, you know, for lack of a better term, bad habit or behavior or something that doesn't really benefit us in the long term and keeping our system resilient and strong in actually figuring out a solution to handling the stress. And of course, it goes without saying that getting to bed earlier if you're staying up too late or getting some help if you keep waking up at night, maybe checking with your doctor or a nutritionist, somebody like that, right? Somebody who's a health professional like that in order to get your sleep in order is a huge, huge thing if you're really struggling with that. So again, really do that honest self-assessment about how you are doing in your habits with diet, sleep, and activity slash exercise. And before I slide right into the next point, I wanna tell you about a free meditation and process that I have for you that can help you with habit change, making positive changes in your life here, you know, around dealing with stress, but it could be anything in going towards what you want and having a better, healthier version of you, a more stable, right, calm, able to deal with anything. And this process has helped me and my clients over the years, and I wanna give it to you for free. So check below in the comments and description to grab that free meditation and process. And so moving into the next tip here, that is to talk to someone, confide in someone, and or get help, okay? So this is, you know, talking it out, getting clarity on what's going on, how you're feeling about it, what you're thinking, and then actively also being proactive in order to solve it, right? It's good to vent and maybe rant a little bit, but you want to come in with a proactive mindset to actually handle the stressful situation, whatever that is in your life, work slash business, relationship, health, right? Somebody that you can trust and or this could mean asking for help, advice, how to deal with it. It could be a therapist or a coach, but I'm sort of with this tip, talking about somebody in your life that you could trust and might be supportive for you, right? This is something that sometimes some of us might feel like I just need to stuff it down and figure this out. If we're even aware that it's happening, right? Or really, really aware, we feel that we just have to push through and it'll be over soon, but that may or may not be true. And it may or may not be really affecting our health, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, it could be really detrimental and it's a good thing to get help now and talk it through and start finding how to solve it 
right now and not waiting till later or just hoping it's going to be over soon. So whether you're having, say, a problem at work with a manager or getting work overload or some big project and there's a lot of stress coming down and you're having a hard time even asking for help there, well, maybe you need to ask for help at work. But maybe that's not possible. And so you've got to find another solution and talk it out with a friend or a family member. Or maybe let's say you're having troubles in your relationship, troubles in your marriage definitely want to try to get some help. Maybe you're living in the land of denial and just hoping again that it's going to right itself and he or she will come around. Well, maybe that's not going to happen and you've got to figure out what's up and talk it through instead of just again, burying your head in the sand and hoping. And in some cases, if you don't have somebody to confide in, then yeah, maybe that therapist or coach is somebody to reach out to and get help. And in the past, I have used BetterHelp when I got to one of the lowest points in my life, actually, a couple years ago. And I found a therapist to help level me out at that time so I could start rebuilding myself uh, and reinvent myself basically through something I went through. So um, check out BetterHelp. I've got a link below the video as well if that is something you feel you need support for. But again, if you have that friend or family member or if you need to talk to somebody at work and maybe a manager, you just need to come out with it. Hey, this is too much for me, right? And you need to ask for help. Again, you, you want to hopefully have a trusted and good person as a manager or boss or whatever, but that is something that you need to reach out and ask for help on. And so the next point here is so straightforward and practical and it's something that can be effective if possible. And it's sort of related to the last one, but a bit different. And that is renegotiate or drop a commitment or the commitment that might be troubling you. Now, obviously this is specific to a specific stressor. If it's a project or something that, you know, there's just too much going on that it's directly this commitment that's affecting you. And that's the difference again between stress and anxiety is there's a particular event or commitment that's happening that is um, the activator of the emotional stress, even though ultimately it's, it's emotional and mental, right? Ultimately how we experience things, but it's this strong stressor that we normally wouldn't react this way and have our, you know, our mental and emotional system being up in arms and physical um, if this event or commitment wasn't occurring. So, and it may be one of those difficult conversations where, you know, this is something you got to remove from your life. I mean, it could be a relationship, right? If it's really not beneficial and supportive, you've got somebody who's, you know, hopefully not, but they're abusive in some way, um, narcissistic, you figure that out, something, maybe that commitment of the relationship needs to be dropped if it's not possible to renegotiate things between you two and talk things out, right? If, if you're not behaving badly, quote unquote, on, on your side, and somehow the stress from them is generating it, you know, from what their behavior is and doing is generating the stress, then that has to be changed or dropped. And then of course at work, you know, or a job situation, it might be one of those times to really decide, is this really right for me, right? So this is more about managing that, that external commitment than, than the mental and emotional stuff, which I always talk about here, which is super important too. And we'll get to a bit of that. But again, a lot of times when people are overwhelmed or stressed, they have too many commitments and or maybe some other commitment has to be dropped that'll help you deal with this one and have more time for it right there's a lot of different ways to deal with it but it's looking at the commitment that's in front of you the one that might be causing it or other ones that take away time and energy and you know mental focus to actually deal with or work on whatever that commitment is does that make sense and let me tell you a brief story about dealing with commitments, managing commitments in this way. In my original coach training back in 2004, oh my gosh, so long ago, the lead coach, who was an amazing master coach, one of the best I've ever seen, was coaching this person in front of the room. And that's how these coach trainings go, is you get to learn how to coach by being coached as the coach training by the master coach in a group setting. And sometimes it can get a little bit intense. And here was this you know, woman who was being coached, successful, go-getter, and the coaching conversation led to the coach finding out and revealing that she couldn't say no to commitments. She just kept saying yes and yes and yes. And she couldn't say no, which can often tie to something called people pleasing behavior, right? And the look on her face when he told her, I think that you are overcommitted and you can't say no, because he's a very intuitive coach. And it was obvious with the conversation. And she just went, her face just went like deer in headlights, right? She just went another shade of, of uh, blood draining out of, of her face. And as she realized that he was right, 
and that this pattern had been going on for many years. So maybe you can relate to that, maybe not, but overcommitment is a real thing and can be a generator of stress if we don't manage our commitments and therefore our time and energy well. And so to finish off this point with a little bonus angle is watch out for overcommitment. Really check and be honest if you're overcommitted and if you can change those things. And it might be that kind of hard conversation with yourself or with that supportive person about if you're overcommitted or not, or have to drop some obligation that just is causing you to be stressed out. It's a legit and valid thing that can cause too much stress for somebody. And by the way, I'd love to hear from you. Drop a comment below on what you think so far, what you're learning, any insights that you have, any tips that you have in ways that you've dealt with stress or even what you might be dealing with right now. And hopefully this video is helping. That's why I make them. And I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. All right, moving along. The next step here or tip, if you want to call it that, is to work to improve your mental and emotional management skills. This is where a big crossover can happen with anxiety. This can be hugely beneficial. Let's say that for some reason you can't change your commitment. You can't really change your situation. Well, you're going to have to learn how to mentally and emotionally deal with it better. Of course, can take care of her physical health with better diet, sleep, and exercise habits as we covered in the first point. But other than that, really looking, do you have good mental and emotional management skills? That's like what this entire channel is about, by the way. So there's more videos on that and more coming always because it's my area of expertise. It's what I has benefited me greatly and what I love to help clients with. And so how good are we at actually realizing that what part of this, if I can't change this, can I shift in my thinking? Can I, uh, you know, allow myself to feel what I'm feeling and not resist what I'm feeling? Because when you learn to allow things to flow through your emotional system, then we don't and don't stuff our emotions down or go try to escape them by drinking or having too much sex or whatever that may be. Right. Um, then we actually feel better when we learn how to do that. Now, again, I don't have time to go into that. That's that's my entire career right there in one little point. So there's obviously many, many things out there to help with that, but it's a legit thing that you need to start working on. If you don't work on it, if you just think you are the way you are and don't learn how to up level your awareness, your ability to shift and change thoughts, how you think about things, how to interact with your nervous system, your emotional system, like I'm talking about here and allowing ourselves to actually feel what we're experiencing, especially if it's a negative emotion or we're stressed and that our systems are actually designed to let things flow through. We're just not conditioned to deal with emotions in that way, unfortunately. And that's a big part of why I'm here. And many helpers, healers, coaches, therapists are here because it's, it's one of the number one skill sets we should have been taught as a kid, but we're not. It's crazy. It's really crazy. I didn't grow up with this stuff. I fell into it because my uncle got into it and he coached me and he totally changed the way I felt about myself in my life in 20 minutes. Never had an experience like that before. And I was just drawn to go to a coach training. I just signed right up. I didn't even think about it, right? I experienced something and different ways of thinking and feeling through that conversation that I had never experienced growing up basically, or rarely, let's say, or it was a total accident, but this was intentional. So working on these skills is hugely important and something I practice every day for myself. And of course, help my clients and make these videos to help you do as well. All right, we're coming in the final stretch here. And this point is reduce media, reduce media time. Okay. This means social media, obviously. And this means also uh, news media, right? Streaming shows, TV, especially on the negative side, not the positive side as much, but the negative side. And of course, we know the news is primed to be negative, or if you don't, now you know. And if you're like me and like dramas and crime shows and war stuff and all that kind of stuff, then the algorithm in Netflix, in Prime, in Hulu, in whatever you watch, knows that and shapes to serve you up more of those shows. We've got to stop doing that. And part of the thing too that can happen is if we use this as a coping mechanism and bring it to bed on our phone or our tablet or have the TV in our room and we're watching these shows and we keep ourselves up later and later, that can go cut into our sleep, having good sleep. I've been totally guilty of this. It's on that level, just the stimulation of it, but especially on the negativity level, if it's fostering more negative and therefore more stress for us, we're already dealing with the negative and stress, and it might even make things tumble even lower and kind of downward spiral more and add to a negative worldview because things suck. 
because I'm too stressed right now. Does that make sense? And of course, going deeper into the social media point, the big killer of comparison could be at hand here. So if you're feeling stressful and then you're starting to feel like, oh, my life's out of control, it's not good. And you start seeing Bert or Jeanette or whoever, right? on social media and their life looks so magical and great, which isn't true probably, but that's how social media works, right? Oftentimes, then you start to feel worse about yourself. And I always check in with clients on this. If there's comparison going on and we have a conversation about if that needs to be reduced or not, or put them in a habit and be accountable for reducing that, shutting that off for a while again, not forever, but under this time of change that I'm there to help them with and stress, we need to reduce those stimulus so we can get control of working on the things that, you know, we need to help them build the mental and emotional skills. And sometimes that is reducing that stimulus in this case being social media and or comparison syndrome, if we want to call it that. And I've got one more final and powerful tip for you here. But before I do that, I want to invite you to hit the subscribe button and smash that notification bell so you can get notified of new videos as they come out to help you out. Also hit the like button because that will help tell the algorithm on YouTube to send this video out to others who are searching, who are browsing, who need help with stress, just like you have in watching this video. And so the final tip here is to every day find three things to be appreciative of or grateful for in your life. Now, this is easier said than done at first, but this is practicing the emotions of appreciation and gratitude, which can help calm your nervous system and actively see that, hey, though this situation is tough right now, I'm going to give a little positive charge that I've got a roof over my head. Hey, at least I have a job. Hey, at least I've got a relationship. It may not be so easy right now, or at least, you know, things used to be good and they're not right now, but there's still a relationship here to save, right? Something like this. I've got my health. I've got running water, whatever it is, three things each day. They can be some of the same. They should be different a little bit at least each day, but this is also proven like this. There's been research done on this psychological research that the more we're appreciative and grateful, the better our life turns out because we feel better and actually can make us more successful, more in flow states so we can actually take effective action to solving problems, whether that's at work, in a relationship or whatever might be stressing us out currently. So implement this positive habit. It's easy to do. Again, you might have to push yourself a little at first, but I really encourage you to do it. And remember to grab that meditation and process below this video to help you with changing your habits, going towards success, right? And having that version of you and the life that you want. And that could include like breaking through the other side of stress, what you want life to be like, right? Make sure to check the comments and description for that link below. And so let's do a quick recap. The first tip was to check in with the big three, right? Which are your diet, your exercise and your sleep, making sure those things are in order. And if not getting on track to get them in order. The second thing we talked about is talking to someone, confiding in someone that supportive person and or asking for help in some way. Then we moved into uh, renegotiating commitment, that commitment, maybe others around it or dropping them whenever possible. Then we talked about working actively on your mental and emotional management skills. And we also talked about reducing media time, social media time, really monitoring that, reducing that if needed, if possible. Well, it's possible, but if needed, right, you'll have to be honest about that and or negative types of media, whether it's news, TV, movies, etc. And then we had the bonus tip around practicing gratitude, three things each day that can help you go towards a more positive thing, be grateful for what you have and sort of get you, you know, back to a little more stable, at least with one positive habit. Of course, many positive habits uh, to be dealt with and worked on. Of course, number one with, with your overall health check is three positive habits in one called health, but all of them are important and add up to manage helping you deal with and get rid of this stress that's been perturbing you in life. As always, I'm grateful for you to be here. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.